Hey everyone, welcome to SFDC Stop and in this video we are going to talk about Lightning Record View form, right? So Lightning Record View form is a form which is used to display a record in LWC. So it is basically using Lightning Data Service to fetch the record and it is used to display a Salesforce record, okay? Next thing is that uh, Lightning Record View form always needs a record ID to work properly. So in case you are not specifying a record ID, the form may not render, okay? And uh, the next thing that we need to take care of is that uh, it automatically fires a load event whenever uh, some things happen. So there are certain kind of situations when it automatically fires a load event. And a load event is something which is automatically fired when a record is loaded. So there are various situations. For example, when the form is loaded initially, so in that case, a load event will fire. When a record ID is updated, in that case, a load event will fire when the fields list is updated so the fields that you are specifying in your record view form whenever you are updating those fields uh, the load event will fire again because it has to fetch the record again uh, to display the values right and uh, you cannot call prevent default on this event so you cannot call uh, event dot prevent default on this load event because prevent default is basically used to uh, you can say suppress the default behavior of an event and uh, whenever you want to do something custom instead of going instead of just uh, uh, getting away with the default behavior of event right so you cannot call this prevent default method on this event because uh, it is not uh, at all useful because it is not having any kind of default behavior the last thing that you need to take care of when using lightning record view form is that uh, event and task objects are not supported on this record view form although this is a very small thing but still uh, people forget about it uh, when you are actually working on something and you are you think of using a record view form and you are trying to you know uh, displaying a task record but it is not displaying at all so event and task object are not supported just uh, keep this thing uh, as a note that uh, you cannot use event and task object uh, records to display by using Lightning record view form, right? So let's have a look at a record view form that we have created. So I have created this record view form, which is having a heading named as contact form read only, and it is going to display a contact record as of now. So as you can see in my Salesforce, I have a contact record named as Gavin Belson, and uh, it is having some mobile number and email IDs as you can see here. And uh, I'm able to display this record by using my custom record view form. So I have just embedded it in my homepage so that I can see it clearly. And uh, this record ID of the contact record, I have specified it in my record view form. Now let's have a look at the code and see what is happening over there. Okay. So this is my writing record view form uh, that I'm using to display over here in the Salesforce org. Now let's have a look at what we have. So inside this, I have just uh, used a lightning card, first of all, which is having a title named as light contact form read only. So this title is basically displayed here, contact form read only. Okay. Apart from that, I'm having a div uh, to specify the card body and inside the card body, I'm using lightning record view form. Okay. So this lightning record view form is having four attributes. Uh, first is record ID. Second is density. Third is object API name and fourth is on load. Okay. So record ID is basically the ID of the record that, uh, that is being loaded in this record view form. So as I told you already that I'm using this particular record ID, uh, to load my record view form, right? So let's check this once again. So I'm using the record ID from my JavaScript and inside my JavaScript, if I just show you, I have specified the same record ID over here, right? So this is the record ID that I have specified and it is being used uh, to load my writing record view form. The second is display density, which I have specified as comfy. So this display density is basically auto by default. And let me show you what is the difference between comfy and compact display density and why I have specified it as comfy, right? So display density is basically the density of display which a user is having uh, in his Salesforce org. So for example, you can see here that I have selected my display density as compact but still I'm having a form in my comfy density. So by default, uh, the comfy density is set up, I guess. And uh, the compact density basically means that you will be having the labels on the left hand side of the values. So in case you are having a, a comfy density, you will be having the labels on the top of the values. And in case you are having a compact density, you will be having the labels on the left side of the values. So let me just switch over to comfy to show you how it looks like. Okay. So it will refresh the page automatically. And if I go to details tab again, 
so here you can see now my labels are coming above the values so in case you are having a config density you will be having the labels above the values because it is it is taking up more space and in case you are having a compact density you will be having the labels on the left of the values okay like this so in my lighting record view form i have explicitly specified that my density should be comfy so that is why it is showing the labels above the values even if my density that i have selected is compact so this is basically important when you don't want the ui to distort something let's say you are you are creating a custom form and you are creating a custom flow and uh, your user don't want the ui to distort in any case so in that case you can simply specify a particular density and you can follow that density over all your lightning components in case i remove this density or let's say i can also specify the density to auto which is by default in that case uh, it will go according to the density of the org okay so meanwhile the source is pushed let me show you about other uh, attributes as well so the third attribute is object api name attribute in this attribute we need to specify the object name uh, like which object record i am fetching okay so i am specifying this object name from my javascript and uh, let me show you so this is the object name attribute or property and uh, i am using the contact object uh, and specifying that object in the object name right so i have imported this contact object from salesforce uh, slash schema slash contact uh, and uh, either you can do it like this or you can simply specify that my object name is contact so you can specify simply like this contact okay so this will also work and in case you are having a custom object you can specify the api name of your custom object that will also work right so i have imported it from schema because it is easier you can create a single js file consisting of all the imports and then you can uh, play around with that okay okay so uh, apart from this the final attribute is onload and this onload is nothing but a event and you can specify a javascript function that will automatically being called whenever this event is fired right so i have specified that my handle load function should be called whenever this event is fired and in this uh, particular handle load function i am just displaying the event type and the event detail so in this event dot detail you will get everything regarding all the information that you are getting in the event that will be in the event dot detail and if i talk about event dot type this will basically tell me the type of the event so this is a on load event so i'll get the event type as load okay and uh, apart from this in the lightning output fields uh, i have specified a field names that i want to display so i have specified the first name the mobile phone the code which is a custom field so i'm specifying the api name here and uh, the last name field and the name field and the email field as well right so all these uh, all these field names i can say i have specified in uh, by using lightning output field tag so just make sure that whenever you are using record view form you must have lightning output fields which are nested under the record view form okay then only the record view form will be able to display the records so you have to use a lightning output fields only to display the records or i can say the record information right so you can see here that uh, my first name is displayed mobile phone is displayed code is displayed and then the last name is displayed which is this and then my full name is again displayed which is uh, specified by name and uh, then my email is displayed right which is given belson at rate huli.com so uh, this is how my contact record form is working and we have specified a density to auto so let's see this in action so let me just refresh this page once okay so now you can see that as my density is uh, compact here so that is why it is showing me the record form in a compact density which is having the labels on the left and the values on the right in case i select the comfy density here and I refresh the page so this record form will update its layout and it will display the record according to the comfy density okay which was there before that is having a label on the top and the value at the bottom okay so uh, in case you don't want your ui to distort you can spe simply specify a comfy or a compact density whatever you are following throughout your custom application okay so let's see uh, what is being displayed in the handle load event now so i'm just going to open the console and uh, here you can see that uh, in the handle load event i am showing event dot type first of all so this event dot type is basically uh, the load uh, property or i can say the load value which is being coming as a event dot type so event dot type is nothing but load and apart from that i am getting event dot detail and event dot detail will be the whole value of that is coming in the event or i can say the whole uh, whatever the property of the event is that is an event dot detail 
so i'm just going to store it in a local variable and i'm going to show that value to you so json dot stringify and uh, temp1 and this is what uh, is coming in my event dot detail right so all this information is coming in the event dot detail and in case you want to do something so for example whenever you are getting the information you want to uh, do some some work re regarding that information so you can get it by event dot detail and you can perform your operations so let me just quickly show you what it is having so it is having a lot of information regarding the record okay so this all json is coming in event dot detail and uh, let me show you what it is it is having the layout states so uh, this is basically regarding the layout because lightning data service is using ui api right so it is basically regarding the layout that how your layout is styled so this is regarding the layout states and uh, uh, this is the whole layout and it's having different sections like the first section and second section of the layout so all these sections are there and uh, if i just move on to the main thing which is regarding so this is regarding the object info uh, it basically tells you uh, what are the lookup objects that are created uh, that are linked to the contact record so for example if i talk about contact record my account uh, record is linked with the contact record right so i have an account record which is automatically linked to this contact record okay so this is ob this is regarding that object info and uh, if i go to records so this is where i'm getting my record so this is my record id which is nothing but uh, this particular record id okay and uh, after that i'm having the fields attribute and it is it is having the value of all the fields so for example if i go to code underscore underscore c it is having a value as one two three four five and here also you can see my code is having a value as one two three four five right and uh, this is my created by field and all the other fields that are there in my contact record like the email field the first name field so you are getting all these values in in the um, fields uh, you can say attribute of your records right so you can get the data through this particular json or through this particular object if you want to do something regarding the data and all that data you are getting in event dot data okay so it depends on the use case if you want to do something with the data you can get this in the event dot data and you can perform your action otherwise it's fine now let's see one more use case here uh, we we heard about this thing that uh, this load event is fired automatically when the record id is updated or when the fields list is updated right so i'm going to display you uh, one case that what happens when the record id is updated so for this what i have done i have uh, called my js function whenever this update button is clicked and i'm updating my record id from given belson record to my richard hendrix record okay so whenever this update button is clicked, I'm updating my record ID to this particular record ID. And uh, we'll see that if the record is loaded again or the load event is fired or not. Okay. So I have cleared my console right now. And uh, let me show you that in the code as well. So on click of this button, I'm calling this function, which is nothing but update record ID. And uh, in this update record ID, I'm setting up the record ID again. So the earlier record ID was this one, which is uh, regarding Gavin Belson. And the new record ID is this one, which is of the Richard Hendricks. Okay. So let's see this in action. So if I click on this button update. So as you can see, my record is updated. It is now having Richard Hendricks and the code is blank and the mobile function phone and email everything is updated right and my load event is called again and this time it is going to have a value uh, of the richard hendrix record so let me just show you that quickly i'm going to save it again and uh, let me display it and json i'm going to copy this and uh, let's just uh, paste this and here you can see i'm getting the values as richard hendrix okay so the updated record is automatically uh, being displayed in the record view form and I'm getting it in my event as well. So this is how the record view form is working and you can basically use it in various use cases. For example, if you're creating a flow or let's say you're creating a setup flow uh, whenever you are uh, where you are creating different records on different steps of the flow, right? So it may happen that whenever you are on step two, you, you need to specify or I can say display the record that you created in step one, right? So for that particular use case, you can directly use the record view form and uh, that will work perfectly fine. 
Okay, so yeah, uh, that's all for this tutorial everyone. I'll give you all the code that I have used in this particular tutorial. Uh, you can find it under the Lightning Data Service branch of my SFDC Stop LWC Concepts repository. So let me just show you the repository quickly. So Salesforce LWC Concepts, this is the name of the repository and you can find all the code in the Lightning Data Service branch of this particular repository, right? So in the next video, we'll learn about some other thing uh, regarding Lightning Data Service. Till then, have a good day. Bye-bye.